Well, Russ Wiseman, Head of Sporting Bet Media, Ascot so far, how's it been for the bookmakers? More than tricky so far, Simon. I think uh, we took a beat in day one, got it all back and more day two. But yesterday, they were carrying us out, out in uh, body bags, I'm afraid. It was a real tough day yesterday. Backed horses winning, uh, well fancied horses winning, tipped horses winning. It was just one of those brutal days that bookmakers like to forget. But I like today's chances and tomorrow with this wet weather now coming in. Well, let's have a look at tomorrow, Saturday, and let's have a look at uh, the feature race, which is the Golden Jubilee over six furlongs. And we've got the Australian horse, Star Witness, backing up. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think you look at the, the, the run from Star Witness and the Kingston, very, very positive indeed. I mean, uh, running on second. I mean, you and I might disagree slightly, but I thought the extra furlong might suit it. But this wet weather is obviously debatable. But there is a serious doubt as to whether Delegated, the current 9-2 to two favourite, will run in this. That will make Star Witness the favourite, the 5-1 to one favourite currently with Sporting. But I think it's a tight race. But, I mean, a, a replication of that run, Simon, it's got a real chance. There's another horse of interest to us in Australia, El Zam, uh, by Redoute's choice. A very impressive winner last start at York and uh, over the six furlongs and freshened up. Yeah, a 9-1 to one chance again. It's got some great pedigree, as you said. I mean, uh, it's very difficult for the uh, European and English punters to really judge this Australian breeding and training. Obviously, we've seen them uh, dominate over recent years. Uh, it's a horse that is definitely on the radar for some people, trading around about 9-1 to one at the moment. I'd be interested to see if this, uh, this rain that's really falling heavily here at the moment will suit that horse as well. Early days now, but we look like having softer or so slow going by our standards over there. Have you taken any big bets on, on Saturday for the Golden Jubilee so far? Well, at the moment, pit punters keeping the powder dry. I think one thing that Royal Ascot has shown us all this year, Simon, is that the punters are far more sophisticated. They're not stepping in, they're judging conditions, the draw, what the track's running like. I think what we're going to find tomorrow is that people will step in late, they'll, they'll assess the conditions, and then they'll go waiting in. At the moment, we've seen a little bit of anti-post money for Delegator and Star Witness. Nothing to write home about. They will be playing late, as they did yesterday. The other race of interest tomorrow from the Australian perspective, the Group 2 Harwick over the 2400. It's normally a pretty good guide for the Melbourne Cup and we see a couple of horses competing that competed last year in Drunken Sailor and Campanologist. Yeah, they've both got chances. Drunken Sailor, a very quirky horse, won so well last time. I mean, whether or not the headgear will work on that one again, I don't know. And again, you'd have to suggest there's a doubt about whether it will run around about a 6-1 to one chance. Campanologist around 9-1. to one. They've really got it to do to beat this away at the door. Now, it's going to go off odds on, I think, at the moment. Although the bookmakers, again, will be pleading for a bit of rain for that one just to make maybe uh, balanced conditions. Drunken Sailor, if it ran like it did last time, that'd be a real runner in this one. And of course, So You Think, uh, unfortunately, went down uh, on the Tuesday, on the Wednesday rather, but um, what did you make of all that, obviously, from a betting perspective? Well, from a punting and bookmaking perspective, I was thrilled, obviously, to see it get beat. We've seen some real champion horses running here this week. The, the, what I did really enjoy about So You Think was that the way that everybody was behind it, everybody really wanted to see the superstar run. Obviously, it's dominated in Australia. It's carried all before it. I mean, Michael Sullivan, the uh, chief executive of Sporting Australia, informs me that it was a $200,000 bet at $1.40 or 2 to 5 in our terms uh, for that horse. Heavily backed. It's the kind of horse that we would love to see get beat. I don't think it lost anything in defeat, though. I think you've interviewed Aidan. I think even he conceded that he didn't quite get it right. I think that what it gives us an idea is that this horse will be back and back better than ever, hopefully. But uh, we need these superstars. But it was a great, great run by uh, uh, Rewilding to collar him that day. What's your take on, say, you think as far as where he'll head from here? Will he go to straight to the arc or will he have a run in between? Well, I'd love to see it go straight to the arc now because, I mean, I think Aiden probably will work on it just for that now. I think if a, a good draw is essential in the arc. We need to be drawn high, obviously. I mean, if we've seen all week horses being pushed wide. It just doesn't happen here at Royal Ascot. Same at Longchamp. I think it goes straight there now. It'll be a well back favourite that day. No, no question about it. Everybody will be uh, well taken by that performance. It was gallant in defeat. That was the key. And fought right, to, right the way to the line. That's the key to that horse. The other salivating contest we're looking forward to seeing, I guess, would be Frankel against Camford Cliffs. Have you found a market there? Well, at the moment, I'd personally, if I, if I was going to match bet the two, it would be 8 to 11 Camford over, uh, over 11 to 10 uh, Frankel. The main reason being, I think Frankel at the moment, we just don't quite know if he's versatile enough. I mean, we've seen, we've seen he's got a big engine. I know that Camford is uh, much more versatile for me. It's a mouthwatering prospect. I know Henry Cecil speaking to him yesterday. He did ind indicate that they will take each other on at some point, but that's a, a mouthwatering clash. But at the moment, Camford Cliffs can't do anything wrong and Frankel maybe slightly botted his copy book even though he was the 300 to 30 on favourite he didn't really win with the kind of exuberance and the kind of domination we expect from that horse maybe I think Camford can take, turn him over of course and if you want to get on uh, as Salo says down in Australia there's no better bet than a sporting bet it's a great saying I couldn't agree with it more I mean sporting bet Australia they're known for taking a big bet we certainly do it here in the UK and across Europe I think today is a key day for us all I think we're going to really fight back in big style today